welcome back and we're going to add another book to our Boeing bookshelf. So I'm going to talk about um, Karen Marie Monning's um, Dark Fever. This is book one in the Fever series. Um, now I, I'm rereading this series because um, so I haven't read it since like about 10 years ago. So and I was really curious on how I was going to take to it rereading it. Um, being a little bit older, 10 years older, and um, how if, it, if my opinion about it would change or get better or whatnot. Um, but so just kind of like a, like a little summary of the book real quick. Um, the book follows um, a character named Michaela Lane. Um, she goes by Mac. Um, she grew, grew up in Ashford, Georgia, um, is, you know, the prim and proper Southern Belle. Um, a, in my opinion, probably a bit materialistic. Um, you know, she just wants, she wants very, like, very simple things. You know, she wants, um, to live life close to her parents. Her and her sister have babies, um, continuously hang out together right now, get drunk with friends, going to the beach or lakes and all that stuff. Um, and... This whole idea for her it quickly gets turned upside down um, when her sister is brutally murdered doing a study abroad in um, Ireland. And she gets a voicemail from her sister hours before she's killed saying that um, there's things that she doesn't even know about herself that she just barely found out and that um, she needs to call her back as soon as she can, and they need to find a book. Um, not saying the name of the book because I will butcher it, but I could probably do it in like a memo on the screen or something, um, or whatnot. Because um, I'm not, I'm not even gonna try that. But um, so, and like her sister's murder case gets closed there's no there's no leads no evidence no nothing really to even track anybody down and trying to process her grief mac decides to she's going to go to ireland she's going to um seek justice and maybe vengeance for her sister that's it's, it's something that she is feels like this is what she has to do and when she gets to Ireland, she quickly realizes that um, life is not what she thought it was going to be, or what it is. Um, like I said, she's very she she lives very much in in um, mundane. I guess would probably be the right term. Um, very realistic. She she doesn't believe in you know um, the paranormal. She doesn't believe in anything fantasy humans are it that's that's this is what we get um and in ireland right now the fae are leaking through into our world and she realizes she can see them and see them in their true form outside their glamour and it's horrifying these are not these are not tinkerbell uh fairies this is this is gr grotesque very dark um, fantasy or fae, um, very brutal as well. And so she's like stumbling around Ireland and all that stuff, and, and um, she inadvertently gets lost. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> she inadvertently gets lost in Ireland or Dublin and um, runs into a um. Uh, um, a bookstore owned by Jericho Barons and he is a very mysterious uh, no-nonsense uh, lack of a better term jerk um, <laughs> uh, there's uh, there's a lot that that we don't know about him there's a lot of like I said a lot of mystery around him but um, yeah, so, I mean, kind of like serendipity, she's looking for this book that her sister says it is absolutely paramount that she has to find, and what a better place to try and ask. Well, she asks for the name of this book, 
and Barron's puts two and two together and it's like, oh, you can see the Fae. Um, and jerkishly says that either accept his help or go die <laughs> because there's no way that she can survive uh, with the Fae um, any other way. Um, so yeah, and it just kind of goes from there. Um, he, he ends up being able to get her to help him find objects of power from the Fae by taking her on little road trips. Um, just a couple. Um, trying to find these, these objects um, because they're trying... He has an alternative motive that is not presented in the first book. I know what it is because I've read the whole series. Um, but... Uh, yeah, he, uh, but she's, ultimately her goal is to find this book because she thinks it holds some answer to her sister's death. Um, so she's kind of, they're both using each other for their own means. But, um, but yeah, it kind of goes from there. Uh, like I said, Jericho Barron's is more no-nonsense, where Mac is, she's very immature right now. For a 22-year-old, she, this is the first time she's been in, outside of her state. She's very um, out of her element completely and is questioning what she is, obviously. She doesn't think that she's quite normal if she can see the Fae and more, more normal people can't. Um, she's wanting to know what Barron's is um, and then ultimately what happened to her sister. How did her sister get caught in this? How did her sister come to needing to find a Fae book, uh, uh, a very powerful, very dark Fae book, um, and along with that immaturity, you know, she's she's definitely like out there. She is more accessorized. She's more like um, prim, like I said, prim proper Barbie. Um, likes pink. She even goes to goes with Bar with Barons in one trip and pastel rainbow colors because that was her level of defiance. Um, she doesn't quite have that much of a backbone yet. She was, um, she's a very, very difficult character for me to, um, 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 relate to because of that. I don't particularly care for the color pink. Um, I mean, I'm pretty dark, um, myself. So, I had a really hard time like getting into this character because of that, um, and I still even had that that issue rereading re the book recently over that. Um, so that part didn't change. Um, it is a little bit of a slow burn book. It is um, it's a lot of information to take in. The world is done pretty well. Um, I felt like I was right there in Dublin in the cold and dreary weather, rainy. Um, where everything is green and pretty and busy, but, uh, but yeah, her, the world building that Karen Remani did was really good. Um, the characters I feel like were, were pretty decent. Um, um, Michaela, you know, I'm still, it, she's, it's the first book. Um, Jericho Barons, I mean, she's really just kind of, yeah, like I said, I really like a jerk. Um, there is another character we kind of get to meet just a little bit, and this kind of goes in with, kind of goes hand in hand with the style of the book. It is romance. It is more heavily romance than what I'm used to. Um, I'm used to, like, Rachel Vincent's, um, adult series, like either the Shifter series or, um, the Menagerie series with her. It's not quite as, um, sexualized. Uh, where this is heavily sexualized mainly because of just the Fae in general are very um, sexual, I guess. That's the right term. Um, you know, one of the characters is Blaine. Um, and if I butcher the names, please, if someone can correct me, that's fine. Um, totally fine. Um, but um, Blaine, he is a royal prince and he, Matt dubs him um, Death by Sex Fae. And she gets pretty detailed with the minor sex scenes that were in book one. Um, nothing too bad, and, but you know, it, like ten years ago, it was my very first, you know, true romance. I mean, this is more romance than Rachel Vincent's. Um, I feel, 
um, but you know it was a bit different. Um, kind of used to it now, um, but yeah, it's it's definitely more more adultish. Not 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 YA at all. Um, but it was really good. I liked it. It it um, I was able to enjoy it a bit more reading it ten years later because I just feel like maybe I was a bit more mature. Um, my reading level has gotten better. My reading in general and comprehension has gotten better ten, from 10 years ago, obviously. Um, so I was able to kind of stay in the world a bit more. Um, it does have a lot of the Fey names, which I'm not even going to attempt to say again. Um, but Karen Ray Monning does put the um, words and definitions and stuff like that, kind of like part of Matt's glossary. Um, is what she dubs it and um, it does have them phonetically broken down so you can pronounce them um, in parentheses it has like it how how it really sounds or whatnot um, saying it not spelling it but um, but yeah it was really good um, the one fight scene that's in there was very minor I'm more used to like um, pretty much, pretty decently described fight scenes. I mean, I keep going to Rachel Vincent and I'll get to her books later uh, at some point. Um, but, um, I'm used to more of like a, a very detail oriented, like fight scenes. Um, this, I think fight scene took place in like one page, a page and a half, I want to say. So, um, it was... You know, I'm just kind of like, oh, it happened. Oh, it's starting. Oh, it happened really fast. It's over. What's going on? Oh, that, that's, that's all we're getting. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, so that part was a little bit like, oh, my adrenaline got pumping. And it's over. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's like, oh, it, you know, it is what it is. Um, the book was good. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's my favorite book out of the series, probably, probably one of my least favorite books out of the series, but, um, but yeah, I mean, right now the world is just really, really small. Like I said, Mac is just trying to get used to the world and get her footing. Um, she has a whole bunch of questions and stuff like that. Um, a lot of it is, you know, good questions that just, it wants you to go into the next book. Um, which I am currently on, and that video will be coming up relatively soon, hopefully. Um, um, I guess that's that's going to be my little my little talk or spill for the book. Um, if you think it's something that I, there's anybody who want to know more about it um, or whatnot, these books can definitely be found in like half price books. Um, I. Maybe Barnes and Noble. I don't know. I haven't quite looked. Like I said, I don't typically walk down the Barnes the, the Barnes and Noble aisle. I don't typically walk down the romance aisle unless I'm absolutely searching for one of her books or one of Rachel Vince's books. Um, so I don't linger. I don't look. Um, and it's just that romance isn't really my thing. Erotica it really isn't my thing. Um, but I do make exception for authors who do write who have good writing um, in these. These two definitely do, but um, but yeah, um, check, pick it up, check it out, um, see what you think. Um, it's a whole new world, definitely different than probably any other Fae series you could be reading, could have read or whatnot. Um, but it's definitely worth a try. Um, but oh, I guess I really should have covered up the name, huh? Okay. Well, anyways, um, yeah. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, like and comment uh, if you have any questions or whatnot or any suggestions, any uh, um, book suggestions or whatnot. Um, again, let us know. We have no problem going and talking about even past books we've already read. So, but anyways, um, thank you for watching and we'll catch you later.